welcome to my course on steps for wrc 537 and wrc 297 calculations for static equipment nozzle checking so as from the subject or title itself you can understand that wrc 537 as well as wrc 297 is applicable for static equipments and only to perform nozzle load checking or nozzle stress checking the main points or contents of this course are introduction so in the first part we will be explaining what is wrc why do we need to perform this wrc calculation so a brief introduction of wrc and then when to perform WRC calculation means what is the need that we perform WRC calculations or what are the times or requirements for the WRC calculation. In next section, we will be learning the types of WRC for nozzle analysis. As already mentioned that WRC is used for nozzle analysis only. So, so what are the types of WRC that are available or that we can perform for nozzle load checking or nozzle analysis then when to apply wrc 537 when to apply wrc 297 means what are the times or what are the situations on which we will be applying wrc 537 and wrc 297 then differences between wrc 537 and wrc 297 what are the major differences between these two wrc bulletins then inputs required for wrc calculation what are the inputs required before we start our analysis in wrc so what are those inputs and from where to get those values or those inputs so those we will be studying in this section then WRC 537 calculation case study and WRC 297 calculation case study. So we will be taking a practical problem where I will be showing you how to perform the WRC 297 and WRC 537 calculations taking a practical example of nozzle. So what is WRC? WRC is World Research Council. So this is the full form of WRC, which is basically a scientific research corporation. So it is a scientific research corporation. So what is their main job? They solve problems involving welding and pressure vessel technologies. So this is the main job that is performed by this scientific research organization or company. To date, they have published more than 500 bulletins that solve various problems of engineering. So, uh, when I am recording this course, till now they have published more than 500 bulletins. Out of those bulletins, WRC 537 and WRC 297 are two similar or two such bulletins which solves different different problems. So, they have more than 500 bulletins in their store then there are two types of wrc bulletin that are relevant to pipe stress engineers for equipment nozzle load checking so as per this course we will be doing equipment nozzle load checking and only two types of wrc bulletins are relevant for that one is known as wrc 297 and the other is known as wrc 537 they are the two most widely used tools for pipe stress engineers and used for mainly nozzle stress checking or nozzle load checking. Now WRC calculation is applicable only for certain static equipments. So this is not applicable for rotating equipments like pumps, compressor, turbines, etc. And also not applicable for all static equipments. Only certain static equipments that meet the boundary conditions given by those two WRC publications. So, both 
wrc297 as well as wrc537 has certain criteria or boundary conditions that must be met before we can perform analysis of the nozzles based on these two bulletins or based on these two tools now wrc537 and wrc107 is the same bulletin in practice it is not same but we can say that wrc537 is equivalent version of wrc107 this is improved version or equivalent version of wrc107 earlier till i feel the year 2010 wrc107 was used then the studies has been performed and the old version of wrc297 has been changed with the name of wrc297 and this is a improved version quoting the original wrc 536 bulletin 537 bulletin means from wrc 537 original paper we can understand that in response to numerous requests over the years for the precise equations depicted in the figures in the 1979 version of wrc107 so you can understand that the original wrc107 was published in 1979 so long ago wrc 537 has been prepared so wrc 537 has been prepared in order to respond to numerous requests for precise equations for the figures that are used in 19, 1979 version of the WRC 107. WRC 537 provides exactly the same content in a more useful and clear format. So it is saying that WRC 537 provides the same content as WRC 107 but it is in a more useful or clear format. It is not an update or a revision app 107. It is the 2010 printing of WRC 107. It has been meticulously checked. Those responsible for codes, standards and specifications that require the use of WRC 107 should amend those documents to reflect the fact that WRC 537 is the equivalent to WRC 107 and provides the same acceptable basis for the design. So we can say that WRC 537 actually replaces WRC 107 in a more useful and clear format or improvised way. The equipment nozzles for which WRC 537 or WRC 297 are used is heat exchangers like revoilers, cell and tube heat exchangers, vertical columns like distillation columns, towers, horizontal vessels like separators and any other pressure vessels which meet the boundary conditions which we will be learning later. Now, when to apply WRC? What is the reason that WRC is required or WRC? When does this WRC term or WRC nozzle analysis comes into picture? So, whenever pressure vessel nozzle loads exceed the allowable values provided by the vendors, we all piping stress engineers know that we have to limit our equipment nozzles within certain values and those values are given either by the equipment manufacturer in their GA drawings or by standard project specific tables or guidelines. However, whenever this pressure vessel nozzle loads that are calculated in softwares like Caesar 2 or Autopipe exceed the allowable values provided by vendors or standard project specific tables, the piping stress engineers have one option to use WRC 537 or WRC 297 or any other FEA tools to calculate the stresses at the nozzle cell junction point and compare the calculated stresses with the allowable values provided by codes or those WRC bulletins. 
Now, if the stresses are found to be within the allowable limits as specified in those bulletins or codes, then the loads and moment values can be accepted without any hesitation or without any problem or without contacting the vendors or manufacturers. So this is one option when your equipment nozzle load is exceeding slightly more or you are getting a more value as compared to the values mentioned in your GA drawing or as given by the equipment manufacturer. During that time, stress engineers perform this WRC calculation to verify that they are calculation or their stress analysis is okay and nozzle loads are acceptable. So this is an option. When the equipment GA drawing does not mention the allowable nozzle load. So one option is when preservation load nozzle loads are exceeding and second option is sometimes it may happen that equipment GA drawings does not mention the allowable nozzle load. So during that time also one of the option to accept your analysis is by performing WRC 297 or WRC 537, whatever is applicable. Now, what does this WRC calculation do? We are telling that we will be doing WRC calculation, but what it actually does? It basically calculates the stresses at the nozzle cell junction points and then Compare the calculated stresses with the allowable values provided by codes or bulletins. Now, if the calculated stresses are less than the allowable stress, then the nozzles are considered to be safe and we can accept it. So, this is the main function of the WRC tools that or WRC calculations that we or piping stress engineers or mechanical static uh, equipment engineers perform. So, this course will be suitable for both mechanical static equipment engineers as well as piping stress engineers. So that's all for this introduction part of the course. Hope you understood what I will be covering in this course and what is WRC, what is WRC 537 and WRC 297. This we will be covering in our next modules. Till then, Goodbye and thank you.